Good morning, this is Melissa with the StockSwoosh.com and welcome. Today I thought I would do an update on Apple. I look at this chart every once in a while and follow it as well as the market simply because Apple is a large company and it is obviously heavily traded and it's one of these market stocks that it's good to keep track of to see what the trend is in the chart and what's going on with it. I also find Apple very interesting because it's a great example of the strategy that I trade each day and that I teach, which is gaps. Because uh, Apple was in a, a nice, nice uptrend for a long, long time and started to turn and did turn in September of 2012. And Apple's kind of been basing out in this uh, sideways range here uh, recently. And I'm sure many people think that uh, this is a low in Apple and that it's a buy in here. Simply because of the fact that it came down in here, traded up, and now just did a lower high. Okay, so this is, I'm going over here what people are seeing, seeing in the chart as far as the pivots go, which is the following. Apple trades down, makes a pivot here. This is the day of the earnings. Actually was trading up the day of the earnings and then ended up opening as a down gap. Uh, wasn't good enough to play down. Would not have qualified for a bearish gap per my system. Um, and actually flipped and failed on the day. So it didn't work out. But didn't look at this as a total failure because it was actually trading up like very, very high. I think around 4.30. Uh, post market the day of the earnings and then then reversed um, and then reversed in the day so this was like a wash then it traded up okay retested this area here remember these are areas came down and now has made a lower high so I'm sure that many people are thinking that this is the bottom of Apple or starting to be however I do not see it that way and the way that it's been trading all in here while the market's been running up actually just confirms that. So let's look at the last, let's just look at the last uh, week, 5.16 or so, that's two weeks. We'll look at the cues. I got up and down a little bit this morning here. Okay, so this is what the market's been doing ever since, well, this is the beginning of May. So the beginning of May, 5-3, the market gapped up, held strongly, and rallied all the way up here. This is all going on um, up until the time of the minutes announcement. Nice, strong, solid rally in the queues. So let's go back and look at Apple. Here's the day that Apple gapped up with the market. It's the only reason that this gapped up. This is the day the market gapped up. Apple gapped up with the market here in 5.3 and couldn't go barely anywhere. In fact, traded red on the day. Tried to go up a teeny weeny weeny little bit and then fell down into itself again. And this was a nice short actually here and here on Apple. I saw that those days. Two nice shorts in here and Apple falling into this area. Just fell right into it. And at that point, then sliced right through that 430, 440, and 430 number very quickly, very easily, by the way, too. So, gap down here and then got bought and rallied. So, the market was trading all this period through here higher and holding the gap, and Apple has not been trading bullishly. This is not bullish activity. It, it just, you, I have to be clear on this. There's a big, big, big difference. Something that's bullish is strong, evident, power, buying, clear. Uh, this is looking like a rally and some bottom feeders in here. I call them bottom feeders, just like those little fishies that you buy for your fish tank to suck off the dirt at the bottom of the tank. Um, they serve a purpose, but the purpose here is not to move Apple higher. Um, the purpose here actually is to clean everything up for the, for the shorts to make more money the next time Apple gaps down, which I have a uh, high conviction that it will. It might not, and if it doesn't, then, then it's going to correct the chart. But I don't think that's going to happen actually for a while. 
Okay, I think Apple is going to gap down again and trade down to the next target area that I've been looking at, which I'll go over in a minute. But, you know, for Apple to fix itself here, it has to do a lot. It would have to do a professional bullish gap up. It would have to rate high and per my rating system, but for an up gap, not a down gap. And it would have to gap very, very high. Uh, you know, was originally looking at it to, um, you know, possibly go here. But the fact is, the more that I study it, I say, no, you know, Apple really has to get still. And this is why I said this actually originally. Apple has to gap up here. Apple has to gap up over $600, $600 in order to correct this chart to be back in an uptrend. Although if Apple gaps around to this 550, 560 area, it won't be in a downtrend anymore. It'll be in neutral. It'll be in a neutral trend. So what I see going on here is Apple wiggling and jiggling while this 200 is trying to catch up to it, which it may or may not, doesn't, doesn't have to. And it's wiggling and jiggling here to get ready to make another move and another leg down. And this is just one of these beautiful examples of how if you know how to trade gaps, you are profiting all over the place. And if you don't know how to read gaps, you're reading the pivots and you are not getting the direction right uh, because this is not turning. This is not even turning at all. Okay. This isn't showing any signs of strength. Let's look at the target. So this target is firm. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful target on Apple to the downside here around this 365. And I have 100% conviction it's going to get to it. And really 350. 350. 350 is the target on Apple for a short. That's $100 to the downside. So if anybody's buying in here thinking that they're going to make money, they're going to get creamed when this happens. And that'll help this go to this number because people then are going to get out. People will get out then. You know, when people are down a lot of money, they, they have to get out eventually. Uh, and that's why it's very, very important to trade correctly. And part of that is reading trends right. And part of that actually is reading gaps. You know, it's gap, it, it, gaps are one of those things that if you know how to do it, you see and know how amazing it is. And if you don't know how to do it, you may not realize how amazing they are. But once you learn them and realize how amazing they are, you'll never go back. Once you trade gaps, you'll never go back. <laughs> that's that's the that's the that's the saying. Once you trade gaps, you will never go back. Uh, it's just one of these things where you see the power of the gap to work in your favor or against you if you don't have the direction right. And you also see how they really can affect the trend of a stock chart. And it's just, it's one of these things that I'm actually lucky that they exist on the planet because if gaps didn't exist, it would be hard to determine what something's going to do before it does it. Because the gap is actually helping me determine what the chart's going to do before it does it. Uh, so it's, it's just really a wonderful, wonderful way and analysis to read things. Uh, it, comprehending gaps is something that you have to learn. And this is, you know, just a skill that you can acquire over time. I think that many people uh, don't understand how important it is to know this, that trade on a regular basis. And not only does this help you, you know, read a chart like Apple, which is a monster in the market, no matter what it does, and will always be a player. Um, it also helps you read the market itself and understand what's going on in the market itself, which is which is vital, which is very, very important. So the update on Apple is Target still in place, looking to get to that 350 sometime this year, it's six, six, seven more months left in the year. And, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. If, Mar if Apple wants to gap up, uh, it's got to get a long way now to correct this chart. Um, could it do it? Sure. This could do anything at once, anything in the world. And uh, right now the market's been very bullish and Apple hasn't been falling through with the market, which is just another sign of confirmed weakness. So you've got to see these signs and read these signs for what it is. And uh, don't get too stuck up on your bias thinking that Apple's the greatest company in the world and therefore just assume that it's going to go higher. 
Uh, Apple is a great company. It's a fantastic company, but you can't assume anything. You read the price. Read what the price is telling you. That's all that you need to know. When you read what is happening actually in the price, you will know then what is going to happen before it happens in the chart. Uh, value is something that is placed on a, a stock based on the supply and demand of what's happening in the overall price action. So you can rationalize, legitimize all you want uh, about the fundamentals of something, but if the price is not reflecting that, then you can't trade this in an upward direction because you know, you're know you going to put yourself in a position where you're going to lose, at least not right now. Uh, and this could do something to change its mind. But tomorrow it could if it wants to. I just don't see that here. All right, I see the next direction uh, to be continuing uh, and going right into here. Really, really nice. So this is Melissa with the StockSwish.com. If you're interested in more information on how to comprehend, understand, and read gaps and would like to take my gap class, please feel free to reach out to me. The next gap class is June 15th and 16th, and I teach the 26-point rating system that I use to rate these gaps to know when they're going to change the trend. And I'm also doing a class this coming week on trends, how to read trends and charts when they change and when they correct themselves in the trend and when they continue. So my email is melissa at the stockswish.com. If you'd like more information, please feel free to reach out to me. Thanks everyone and have a great weekend.